Hi everyone, my name's Laura and I'm the Specky Seamstress. Welcome back to my channel. And I guess I should probably welcome myself back to the channel because it's been a little while since I've sat down and talked to you all. <laughs> um, sorry about that. I thought I would take a couple of weeks off while the business launched and things were a bit busy and that two weeks turned into two months. <sighs> 2020 <laughs> it's just gone um so today i'm talking to you about these shorts i'm showing you back to front um which this is not a very helpful view of um but i'm here talking to you today as part of my um role as a featured blogger for the so my style 2020 challenge um this challenge is a monthly challenge where two patterns are released every month and you sew them up and have a chance to win prizes um and this month is the last month and there are two patterns the made by ray rose which is what i'm going to show you and also i think it's the five out of four patterns um rita skirt it's a kind of jersey tube skirt which ironica from um needle in the bell or the crunchy mummy she is on both um is talking about so go over and check out her her um stories <laughs> blogs you know what i mean her content about um so my style this month i will link her details down below as well as all of the other featured leaders and bloggers over the course of the year so you can go and check out all of their awesome content um you guys will remember that i maybe will remember that I made a raincoat from the Willa vest pattern from Layla Jane patterns in March and um, also for Sew My Style so you should be familiar with the concept so back to the shorts <laughs> so the Made by Ray Rose pattern is a, a flat fronted elasticated backed trouser short collot pattern it's not really a collot pattern it comes in three lengths there's shorts there's it's not three quarter length it's kind of ankle length i think it's what a lot of ready to wear places call seven eighths length but you know cropped <laughs> and then a full length trouser and when i found out that i was going to be making these for the challenge i immediately wanted to make shorts <laughs> even though it was december and for me that is very much winter i wanted to make shorts and that's partly because i wear shorts way more than i wear trousers even in winter i love thick tights snug tights are my friends i've actually just i'm wearing today their 120 denier tights amazing game changer and that's not the first time i'm gonna say that in this vlog either <laughs> not about snug tights just in general I'm going to be quite rambly because it's been a while since I've vlogged so I hope you enjoy rambly Laura <laughs> today um but yeah I wanted to make shorts because I really like winter shorts if you've been following me for a while you'll know that I've made lots of the Megan Nielsen flint shorts now don't tell the Megan Nielsen flint shorts but I think I might like these more <laughs> or at least for thinner fabrics I think I like these more because the flints are really good for like denims and thick twills and canvases and things because um elasticated backs and thicker fabrics don't really work but uh yeah i i really <laughs> really like these um but my, one of the main reasons i wanted to try the shorts was because i wanted to expand my shorts repertoire i do love the flints and i have lots of them and i've made them into dungarees and i love them but it's good to try other patterns and not get too caught up with one um, and see what you like and i'm so pleased that i did because i love these i've basically been wearing these non-stop since i um made them this is the first day that i haven't worn them and i actually filmed this yesterday but the lighting was terrible <laughs> um so i'm refilming it and i was in a t-shirt and these and i just like took them off and was <laughs> sat in my tights and a t-shirt um talking about them because i wanted to show you the fabric so um i decided that i wanted to make shorts i looked through my stash at what i could use to, to to make them i've got some really lovely um viscose like twill type fabrics that i think would work really well with these and i'm definitely going to make some more but i was drawn to a remnant of this really lovely um it's, it's got thread over it because i was sewing in these yesterday um 
blue and green like classic czech tartan um type fabric now i picked up this it was a remnant from the new craft house sew yourself sustainable virtual fabric swap event <laughs> from last year so every year new craft house who are a fabric shop in the uk who specialize in dead stock um which is sort of left over from the ready to wear <laughs> world <laughs> um have a sew yourself sustainable challenge in september which is a photo challenge every day and one of the days is a fabric swap so you can put up things that you want to swap in your stash it's like a virtual fabric table and then you can ask people for what they've put up and, and swap so last year i got this remnant and i'm pretty sure like 99999 percent sure that um it were i I was told it was cotton and so in my head it, it was cotton that was just <laughs> what it was when I got it I wasn't particularly familiar with all the different fabric types I would say and I um, stashed it away because it was a, a long skinny piece of fabric so it was um, 45 centimeters wide and like 2.7 meters tall or long or something um, and when I asked for it in the swap I sort of thought oh that'll make a really nice pair of shorts and then I got it and I was like wow 45 centimeters isn't very <laughs> wide um and so it just got stashed away and you know I thought I could color block it with something and, and there we go but something made me grab it from the stash and the made by a rose shorts pattern piece the front is exactly 45 centimeters and the back was like 47 centimeters because the back rise is a little bit higher and i thought it's gonna be fine <laughs> i'll have a shorter hem um and i'll do that so i had to cut them cross grain but that didn't really matter and i cut out all the pieces quite happily um i think i had to piece no i didn't even have to piece anything because the front waistband and the back waistband are separate uh, because it's flat front elasticated back it was fine so i cut them out and as i was working with the fabric i thought this fabric is really nice <laughs> like it's a really nice weight and feel and like it's really really lovely and i was thinking i really lucked out here this is really lovely quality fabric and then the moment i put my iron on it i thought this isn't cotton this is wool or at least it's a lot wool <laughs> because uh, you know the smell you get for hot wool <laughs> such a thing that's so to say um so i went and did a burn test on some of my very minimal scraps there were so few scraps left of this i really did efficiently cut out um it's like they were destined this fabric was destined to be these shorts and uh yeah it's at least very high percentage wool i am not fantastic at burn tests i wouldn't be able to tell you um what else is in it but there's certainly no polyester didn't didn't melt or anything um if you're interested in learning about burn tests uh, whitney from tomcat stitchery has a really good video talking about them so do go check that out um so yeah this is kind of a story of how i accidentally made myself a pair of wool shorts um it's not a really thick wool i think on on reflection i think this fabric might have once been a scarf um i'm going to show you the selvage here and which i've got as the hem and i just i don't know i've got a feeling it was like a pashmina -y scarf um and this was just the leftover from whatever someone had decided to make so anyway then i thought well now i need to really take care with these i mean more than normal because <laughs> they're wool shorts um and i need to make the most of this beautiful fabric so i took my time and and really kind of sewed this with with care and um you can kind of I, I can't decide whether this is because i took more care than normal or because um i've got better since i last did this but folding over the waistband to catch the um the underneath the kind of facing by stitching in the ditch this was I, it was just so much easier than i've ever done it before and that was great like it felt really successful it makes it i think feel and look like quite professional which is really nice so 
let me talk to you about the pattern um, a little bit more because one of the reasons I've fallen in love with this pattern is because the pockets are amazing. Now, I do love a slash pocket, but somehow the proportions of these are just perfect. Now, I hack slash pockets onto lots of patterns um, and th these are just very good. They're the perfect, like, size they're a good i can fit my whole hand in there but i don't have to reach down to get them i do have a tendency when i'm hacking my own pockets onto things to make them too long um and then i have to kind of reach down to get what's in the bottom of them um the opening is very nice i i don't know i'm just i'm a fangirling on these pockets and i'm fangirling to the point where i have the pattern pieces for the pocket and the pocket facing in the basket on my um pegboard because i'm just going to use them for everything <laughs> so yes the pockets are very good it's very pleasing when the pocket piece takes up kind of like the whole a4 page when you're sticking a pattern together there's just something quite satisfying about that um and then the the pattern is very simple to put together there are two pleats on each side um of the like on each leg um the pockets and then the method for inserting the elastic was quite clever i thought i hadn't really seen this before i haven't sewn a lot of flat front elastic back clothing um only the hack of the winslow clots because they didn't really work as well for me as i wanted them to they didn't stay up as well as i wanted them to particularly when i put my phone in my pocket so i sort of got put off a little bit and i've never been a big elasticated waist person um i talked about that a little bit in my last vlog before my little break um because i can't decide whether that's because they're never made that well or they never fit that well or whatever um but I am going to be making more of these and I'm tempted to try and make a pair of dungarees out of these as well because I don't think it would be that difficult. You just need to put the straps in to the elastics at the back. Um, but anyway, the construction was, was quite interesting because what you did was you attached all of the waistband kind of on the outside and then when you folded it over, you pinned or basted the front waistband down and you stitched fully the back waistband down which meant that you had a lot more room to insert the elastic through than just like a little gap and i always find when you just have a little gap i'm not very neat at sewing the little gap down <laughs> after the elastic is in um, and this just seemed to be much nicer than that so i'll definitely be using that again and then because i was taking care <laughs> i did the optional extra of adding the top stitching along the waistband so this is just a like inch wide elastic that i've got in here now the pattern says that you can do either you can either add one wide elastic or you can add channels and add you know smaller pieces of elastic and i've seen this option before where you top stitch down you know you stretch the elastic and then you top stitch down in rows um and i've never done it because ironically i thought that it would make it less professional looking but i actually think it looks really good um and i also think that it's i mean it, the reason you do it is to stabilize it so that the elastic doesn't roll and i recently made a pair of pajama bottoms that i will talk to you about soon um that has just an elastic all the way around and the elastic is starting to roll a little bit so i think that's why i kind of thought okay i'll i'll do this so good and and i think that it somehow makes the elastic stretch more evenly so you don't get kind of a gaping bit in the in the back if you're a if you've got a sway back um, i'm not quite sure of the physics behind that but <laughs> so anyway this was my other use of the word game changer because i will definitely be doing this in future um, and i'm definitely going to be making more of these um, i made the size one <laughs> um so made by ray does um, it goes up to XL and then it goes one, two, three, four, five. So I made the one and I think my my sizing fell between the extra large and the one. Um, and I am denied about what to make, but I made the one and I'm kind of pleased I did because there isn't masses of room in the thighs. Now, not, they're not tight at all, but when I sit down, um, I just notice that there's not loads of extra room. So 
be wary of that if you are a big thighed person <laughs> because I'm not particularly big thighed and um yeah like like I say they're not tight they're not uncomfortable at all but um there just isn't loads of room for my thighs when I sit down so yeah the other thing to note is that I made these shorter than they um were advertised as so I although I shortened the length slightly from the pattern piece I've still hemmed this I think slightly more than you're supposed to so I have made them a little bit shorter um, and basically I'm just in love with them I want to pull all of the one meter pieces out of my stash of kind of lightish weight fabric uh, like I said I've got some nice viscose twirls I've got a really nice tensile twirl that I think will be lovely um, I have a couple of cotton sateens and chambres that I think will work really well so and also a couple of lightweight needle cords oh the lighting's gone a bit <laughs> funny um a couple of lightweight needle cords which i think will be really nice for a pair of wintry um tight uh, tights wintry shorts so i might make some more um i also really want to make a pair of pajamas from this pattern because i made myself these pajamas recently and i really love them and i've worn them all the time um but all of the pajama bottoms from like ready to wear shops that I prefer are flat fronted um, and the pajama pattern I've made is elastic all the way around. So I'm thinking I can use the full length version, make a pair of pajama bottoms and then what I'll do, I've just dropped them so I'm going to pick them back up again, um, is before I sew the waistband down, I will put buttonholes in the front waistband rather than the facing so it won't go all the way through just here and then I can put some cotton twill tape or some ribbon or some bias binding um through that and use it as a tie to kind of really give it that pajama bottom feel so I think I might do that I'm also half tempted to try and make them into a pair of jogging bottoms um I have this really lovely dark green fle fleece or like fur lined fabric um, obviously not royal fur um to make myself a pair of really cozy jogging bottom pajamas because i'm just really cold at the minute working from home and i'm thinking i could make them probably at the like seven eighths length and then add a cuff at the bottom to bring them in and i think that would just be a really like cozy warm um fabric so the uh the, that one that fabric has a little bit of stretch to it but I think if I interface the waistband with a non-stretch fabric I would a non-stretch interfacing I think I'd probably be okay so those are the rose shorts and yeah I can't wait to make more and show you more and um, obviously I've been quite busy with uh, the business launch so if you've made it this far um thank you because I know I've been a bit rambly uh, the website with the um, bias binding is now live and um, I did think about coming on and doing a live video or um, a little video to kind of say that but I didn't really want to feel like I'd been gone for ages and then was just like shop shop yay shop um, because actually I come on here to be quite chatty about my makes so um, yeah but the, the shop is open and um, the website's the speckyseamstress.com um, do head over and check out if you would like to see what I've been up to and yeah i'm looking forward to being back on youtube let me know if there's any videos you'd like me to make i know that tutorial for bias binding is highly requested at the minute and i was hoping to get it filmed before the website went live but um through a number of uh mishaps <laughs> that didn't quite happen but um it's on my list of things to do between christmas and new year so there'll be yeah tutorials for bias binding coming soon Thank you so much for watching and until next time, which won't be as long as it was the last time I said that, 